Welcome to Wooden Pulpit Media's YouTube production about the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, Part 1. Today we will get to know the players that are important and involved in the St. Bartholomew Day Massacre. The massacre itself occurs on August 24th, 1572, where Roman Catholics in the city of Paris and then spreading throughout all of France in the weeks and months to follow receive word to slaughter the Huguenots. Uh, many of the Huguenot nobles were there in Paris thanks to a marriage between Huguenot leader Henry of Navarre and Roman Catholic Princess Margaret. It would result in the death of many of their noble leaders and an untold number of Huguenots all throughout France. The situation at the time coming up to this massacre was that about 10% of France was reformed. Many clumped in certain areas of France so that there was places that the control really was held by local Huguenot leaders almost more than it was by the crown of France itself. Tensions were high throughout all of France as there had already been three wars of religion and the most recent war of religion had not gone well for the ruling family, the Valois family and the Catholics. They had been basically defeated and been forced to sign the Peace of Saint Germain which gave mo the most freedoms yet to the Huguenot uh, the, who are the Reformed believers in France. The Valois dynasty itself was in trouble, uh, and many expected it to fail. Charles IX was a sickly man. He had no male children. His brother, who was next in line, Henry, was uh, flamboyantly gay, and no one expected him to have any children. The next child, Francois, was also sickly. He was scarred and deformed from a young bout with the pox, leaving the next in line to be the Protestant Henry of Navarre. The main players we need to meet now, first the Roman Catholics, and Catherine de' Medici stands at the top of that list. She was the Queen Mother, had served Ed as regent for Charles IX when his older brother had died, and she was still pulling the strings behind the, the scenes. Charles IX relied heavily upon her, was easily manipulated by her. Many people believe that she is the motivating factor and mastermind behind the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. She herself was not ardently Roman Catholic, was more superstitious than anything else. She enjoyed visiting Nostradamus, for example, uh, and while she was happy to be Catholic, uh, she was more in love with being in power. King Charles IX uh, was a young 22 at the time the massacre occurred. Not many believe him to be the mastermind behind it, but many put the ultimate responsibility on his shoulders. He was the king, after all. Uh, but he was a sickly king. He would only live to 1574 and die at the age of 24. Uh, many think from tuberculosis, but we're not sure. Many will also say the impact of St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre on him spiritually and emotionally, he never recovers from. We need to know about Margaret, his sister. Margot, as she's called by her family members, who was considered a rare beauty, in the court of France. Not many people visit the court of France without remarking upon her her striking good looks. However, uh, she is not loved as a daughter. She's more seen by Catherine as a, a chess piece to be played. Their relationship was not warm, it was not cordial, and it was even occasionally uh, hostile. She did not want to be a part of this marriage because Margot was devoutly Catholic but was uh, made to join in this marriage uh, for the sake of unity, for the sake of the family, for the sake of France. Catherine wanted to make sure that her descendants were always on the throne, and if her male children were going to die without being able to secure male uh, descendants, then maybe her daughter could produce one that would ultimately be a ruler of France. Duke Henry of Guise must also be 
mentioned during this, many put the masterminding of the massacre upon his shoulders. He, after all, had a, an ex extraordinarily large grudge against the Huguenots, and specifically Admiral Gaspard Caligny, because his, uh, the death of his father, Francois. Francois had started one of the wars of religion when he massacred Huguenots who were worshipping according to the law outside the town of Vassy in 1561. In the resulting war, uh, a man laid and pretend he was one of the wounded and shot Duke of Guise Francois from behind, killing him. The man was tortured endlessly until he said that he was paid to do it by Admiral Caligny. When he was turned over to the king and the torture stopped, he recanted such a story. Caligny was found innocent, but Duke Henry never forgave uh, anyone for the death of his father. Henry was also a devout and ardent Catholic and he had dreams of ultimately being on the throne himself, one way or another. And when he could not marry Margot, eventually he turned to other routes. We do need to look briefly at the other side, the main players for the Huguenots, the French Reformed, who were their leaders during this massacre. And the first is Admiral Gaspard Caligny. He was a nobleman and a leader militarily and uh, temperamentally and spiritually in a lot of ways, of the French Reformed Church. He, uh, his whole family ultimately converts to the Reformed faith, including an older brother, Odette, who was a cardinal in the Roman Catholic Church. Himself, Gaspard, probably converted by his younger brother's conversion to the Reformed faith. While he was a military hero and a man of great renown and bravery, he did not wish to take up arms often and was usually forced into it and always counseled against it. However, it is that grudge held by Duke Henry of Guise against Gaspard Caligny and Gaspard Caligny's influence over the young Charles IX that has a large role in the massacre itself. Henry of Navarre, who was only 18 in 1572, uh, is probably too young and maybe not devout enough a Reformed believer to be considered the leader of the Reformed Huguenot party, but he was in line for the throne. And his mother, Jean d'Albret, was extremely beloved by the Reformed. She herself was devout, and she used her kingdom of Navarre, which was nominally independent of France, and trying to develop closer ties with France to help protect from the incursions of the Spanish who were trying to steal the country. But she used that kingdom of Navarre as a, as a safe haven for the Reformed often. And she had even risked her life to rescue young Henry when his father had taken him as a young boy and uh, kept him in Paris and tried to raise him Roman Catholic, his father, for uh, extra money and more titles, had left the Reformed faith and become Roman Catholic and had used Henry as a pawn in that game. But Jean would rescue him and bring him back to Navarre he was not really a man of great morals, but does ultimately agree to a marriage with Margaret for the sake of the unity of France, a picture of Catholics and Protestants together. His mother, Jean, dies a few months before this marriage takes place, and Henry, however, goes on with the marriage that leads ultimately to the massacre. Next time we're going to examine that marriage. We'll look closer at what happens and the marriage trap itself. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Click subscribe so that you don't miss any more. Thank you for watching.